On the test site is a, is a, a, a place called uh, News Knob. It's in the north part of uh, the south end of Yucca Flat. And, and newsmen, people, dignitaries used to go there to watch atmospheric nuclear tests. Walter Cronkite, for example, spent a lot of time there. And this is our replica of News Knob. This will be covered with stone. The original News Knob sign will be up there. And you're standing on this ramp and you'll be walking down stairs like as you come into this Ground Zero Theater. And when you get in here, what you'll see are benches that go across here and a big screen on the end there which will have uh, uh, the story of the test site and we're still, this is all still under development but, but what we hope to do is have a, a featured loop, the end of which is a is an atmospheric nuclear test and when when the bomb goes off we, we are going to have lights flashing and hot air rushing in here and the bench is shaking. This is as close to Disneyland as we think we'll be able to get. As part of the negotiations, treaty negotiations going on between the United States and the then Soviet Union, uh, the two countries agreed on a test of the verification techniques that one would need to to uh, implement the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. So in 1988, the United States did a nuclear test at the Nevada test site and the Soviets came over and instrumented it. And three months later, the Soviets did a nuclear test out at Semipalatinsk in Kazakhstan and the United States had instrumentation there. So for the first time in the midst of the Cold War, here were the two, there was an exchange of the scientists of the two laboratories and we had Soviets on the test site and we were on their test site. This is a one-fifth scale model of a, of a nuclear test canister. This is the sort of thing that we have used since 1963 to, to test weapons and, and in, this, in this canister you would find the nuclear device to be tested on, a sh on this shelf. And if you look up above here, you see all of these lines of sight, which all focus down onto this device in the center. And each one of these is a different kind of a detector that is measuring the performance of this device to be tested. All of this goes down in the bottom of a hole, uh, a few hundred to a few thousand feet deep, it's uh, filled back up with, with uh, sand and gravel and concrete, and then the test is conducted. The trick is you have to make all of these measurements and get the information out before the shock wave destroys it all. You'll be, you'll be entering this gallery coming through that piece of pipe coming down as if you're walking underground, and, and then this whole gallery has rock in it as you see in these representations because this is meant to look like a tunnel underground and uh, it, it should be very spectacular as you walk in here and you will you will see the story of the 60s and the 70s and the 80s as you come around the corner when the transition was made from atmospheric testing to underground testing how you mine how you drill holes and of course, why, why we went underground the Treaty of 1963 is all displayed in this gallery. One of, the, one of the people at this table, this was called the test panel. One of the people at this table was the test manager, the federal official that, that was responsible for the safe conduct of the test. And I did that for 30 some nuclear tests. So, so I was on the hook to make sure that this thing went well, but most importantly went safely. At this table we had the test panel. The test panel included a physician. It included a, uh, a representative of uh, the Environmental Protection Agency who were responsible for safety off-site. It had a senior scientist from the laboratory that was doing the test. It had the test manager had the operations officer that was in charge of, of all of the security and aircraft and, and all of the guards associated with the test. 
And then you had a representative that was directly involved, with, a laboratory representative directly involved with the test, who was responsible for all of the re-entries to go get the data after the test was, was completed. This is a grain silo from what we call the AEC farm. A lot of people don't know that there was a point in time at the test site when, when we grew crops and we raised cattle and the whole purpose of doing that was so that we could deliberately irradiate the crops, feed, the, feed those irradiated crops to the cattle and then measure the how the radiation was processed through the cattle and then and then into the milk stream, the purpose to understand how, how fallout would get into the human food chain. So we brought this grain silo in from the test site and it's going to be another little theater. And inside that theater you will learn exactly what happened at the at the farm.